Hello, I'm Roisin Hasty with the BBC News. At least 500 employees of the pioneering artificial intelligence company OpenAI have threatened to quit over the sacking of the CEO, Sam Altman. In a letter to the directors, they said they wanted Mr Altman and co-founder Greg Brockman reinstated and the board to resign. James Clayton is in San Francisco. The problem is Microsoft have already said that Sam Altman can come work with Microsoft. Sam Altman's agreed, as can Greg Brockman. So you have this sort of warring faction within OpenAI and you have this very, very, very wealthy company saying you're welcome to come over this way. And so OpenAI now is in real chaos. If they were to lose hundreds of highly skilled people, it's very, very hard to replace those people, particularly those AI experts. There aren't that many of them and they are incredibly highly sought after in Silicon Valley and elsewhere. The United States says fuel has reached Gaza following Israel's announcement on Sunday that it would allow supplies to support non-governmental organisations. The White House said the fuel will help with food distribution and allow hospital generators to function. There are reports of renewed fighting at the besieged territory's hospitals. Tom Bateman in Jerusalem has more. Tonight at the Indonesian hospital, which is right at the north of the Gaza Strip there, we're hearing from the hospital director in messages passed to the BBC what he's described as intermittent shooting with some 500 patients or so still trapped inside. And earlier we had heard a report from the hospital. They said that the Israelis had shelled the hospital. Now the Israeli military then said that it had been fired at by gunmen from inside the hospital and so they fired back at the source of that fire. The president of the International Committee of the Red Cross has travelled to Qatar where a deal on the release of hostages taken from southern Israel by Hamas is believed to be near. Imogen Fox has more. The Red Cross says it doesn't negotiate hostage releases. In fact, it was Qatar which played a key role in the release of the four hostages who have been freed. The ICRC then retrieved them from agreed locations and brought them safely back to Israel. The Red Cross does have a long history of this kind of work. It helped with the release of Nigerian schoolgirls abducted by Boko Haram and with last year's prisoner exchanges in Yemen. The government in Ukraine has fired the head and deputy head of the state special communications service, the government department responsible for cyber defence. Yuri Shakol and Viktor Zura were sacked following an investigation into corruption. Officials said that more than $7 million had been misappropriated during Mr Shakol's time at the department. World News from the BBC. A court in Italy has sentenced more than 200 people to jail in the biggest anti-mafia trial seen in decades. It targeted the country's most powerful criminal syndicate, the Calabria-based Nodrangheta, which dominates Europe's cocaine trade. More than 300 defendants, including mobsters and white-collar collaborators, had been tried over nearly three years in a specially built bunker courthouse. Among those convicted are a former MP and a senator for the late Silvio Berlusconi's Forza Italia party, former policeman and a regional councillor. Joe Biden has congratulated Liberia's president-elect Joseph Boakai after he was announced as the winner of the country's recent presidential election. The American leader also commended the incumbent George Weir for respecting the will of the people and putting patriotism above politics. It's the second democratic transfer of power in six years in the West African country, which has spent decades under authoritarian rule. President Biden has joked about his age at an annual White House Thanksgiving event, which coincided with his 81st birthday. He was speaking after taking part in the holiday tradition of pardoning two turkeys. Thanks to the chairman of the National Turkey Federation, Steve Lykin. And by the way, I, it's my birthday today and they can actually sang birthday music. I just want you to know it's difficult turning 60. It's difficult. <laughs> Mr. Biden's age has been seized upon by Republicans ahead of next year's election, despite their likely candidate Donald Trump being only a few years younger. But some Democrats have also expressed concern. Six of the shirts worn by Lionel Messi during Argentina's Qatar World Cup winning campaign last year to be sold at auction in New York. His shirt from the final is expected to fetch around $10 million. BBC News.